freaking first cut. Golly. Welcome to the First Cut Podcast, another After Dark edition. I'm Rick Gaiman, and this is your round three recap for this week's Sony Open. Greg Ducharme is alongside. Hello, Greg. Good good evening, Rick. Uh, I like the little After Dark logo we got here, if you're watching on YouTube. That is That's right. Official. If you are only listening to the audio version, you have missed the little Easter egg that is the First Cut logo that always sits in the upper right hand corner of the show uh redesigned for the after dark episodes with a little bit of neon and this came out this came out even better than i than i thought it would all props to Josh. it's really good it's really good so yeah happy to be here after dark quite a day out there at the sony open we we actually have one other logo in mind for a different time of podcast so that will probably be unveiled. Ah, oh, crap. We probably won't even get to unveil that until the Scottish Open. This may have a little bit of clip art in it, I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm picturing a little steam rising out of a cup. Yeah, yeah. Right. You're right in the brainstorm session. Yep. A, little coffee, golf, a little coffee golf action. Yep, yep. That's All right. great. That's exactly what we are looking forward to. But we got to get through the round three of the Sony Open first. And Greg, it was moving day all 82 golfers who made the cut uh were within what nine shots of the lead no seven shots of the lead within seven of the lead it it, it was log jammed at the end of the day yesterday and it was log jammed most of the day today most of the day because it has solidified itself a little bit this is not 30 wide as it was for the vast majority of the saturday Right. And and this is what moving day is for in theory. You know, when, when you have a leaderboard like this where the scores are right around that 10 under par mark and for a long time, you know, nine under was leading the way today uh, and everybody was just kind of sprinkling in birdies and everybody's kind of within two. You're waiting for somebody to go on a run when all of a sudden they can sort of separate. But you had no idea who it was going to be which was the, it, it could have been anybody in the entire field. Um, but like you said, it has thinned itself out a little bit. And I think we've really limited the number of guys who can win tomorrow. Yeah. So let's uh, talk about a couple of the early movers. Then we'll get to the top of that leaderboard. And it was a 64 this morning from Ben Silverman to move up 26 spots. He'll enter the final round in a tie for fifth. It was a bogey free 64. When you look at what Ben Silverman has been up to, he played on the Corn Ferry Tour last year. He won early in the year. He won in January of last year in the Bahamas. He had a, a, another few podiums along the way he's been a professional for a very very long time you usually see him at the canadian open and and this was a day where he significantly improved his positioning and is hopefully going to get himself off to a good start fedex cup points wise he's gotten his pga tour card on a couple on two different occasions uh, a couple years ago i want to say in like the 2015 time frame um that could be off on that year but he had his card twice before and has gone back and forth. So a, a round like this today is huge in keeping your PGA Tour card for the first time and putting himself in the mix because, quite frankly, uh, at 11 under par, he's in the mix to win this thing. And a, a win tomorrow, I, I believe it will earn him more than he's earned in his PGA Tour career in total, wow. um, which is which is really cool. And And he played some really good golf. He was phenomenal around the greens. I mean, he he missed six greens, got them all up and down, and I don't think he had a putt outside of two uh, outside of three feet. I mean, they were, and he he hold a bunker shot during this round today. His short game was absolutely on fire, and it, that's an important thing. You look at this leaderboard; a lot of guys are having some real success around the greens, um, which is which is great that Ben was able to do that today too. Yeah, plenty of short game magic from the Canadian. Now, Russell Henley gave everybody a scare because Russell Henley, uh, accurate, uh, precision, went out in 31, made a birdie on 10. He got this round to five under par. 
stumbled a little bit coming in with bogeys on 13 and 17. He would get one back at 18. It's a second consecutive 66 for Russell Henley, who was miserable in Maui last week, but maybe it was just a little bit of rust that he needed to knock off. Greg, he is in at nine under. That's five shots off the lead. Is that too far back? I think that's too far back. You know, I was kind of wondering most of today if that eight under mark was going to be too far back. Uh, and that was with leaders at, I was figuring 12 under. Uh, it's gone past that. I won't give any more away, I promise. Uh, but at this point, I think I think nine under is too far back. And those two bogeys are really going to cost him because at 11 under or better, you're right there in the mix. So that was a little bit disappointing from Russell. He he had some good shots in there, but it, you know, it wasn't the Russell Henley uh, uh, precision iron play that we're used to seeing today. So, you know, it was a good, a really good score, uh, some disappointing moments, but I, I don't think it was Russell Henley's best game today. The round of the day was a 63. It was shot by three different golfers. Emiliano Grillo did it. A guy who is currently tied for the lead did it. We'll talk about him in a second. And Sam Stevens did it, which when you match that with his opening to 67, Sam Stevens is in at 13 under par, solo third heading into the final round. You look at his third round. He drove it beautifully. You mentioned uh, how a lot of these guys were finding success. We're doing it around the greens. Sam Stevens absolutely did that. He gains 1.8 strokes there. Another two on the putting surfaces. Here's another young guy, plenty of talent, trying to make a name for himself, trying to kind of wedge his spot into this new, new PGA Tour ecosystem. And he has all the speed to do it. You mentioned that he drove it beautifully. But I find this to be interesting. Uh, there are two driving statistics when it comes to distance that we have here we have the driving distance on two holes which is the traditional measure driving distance uh he was 35th today at 305 if you look at his driving distance for all the drives he hit it was 311.9 which was first in the field mm. so that tells you that he's a little bit more aggressive than some of the other players a little more willing to hit driver and it worked out well. He, I mean, he had nine fairways too. So he was, he was playing a different golf course than everybody else. And uh, the score shows it. Yeah, the score really did show it. Now we are waiting for Benny on to get in here. He is playing 18 right now, which is obviously one of the, the easier holes on the golf course. He's at 12 under par. So Good chance he gets to 13, outside chance he gets to 14. We'll give him a couple of minutes because we have a lot of other names to talk about who are already done. We're going to continue this conversation after hearing a word from our partners. It's And we're back. Now, Greg, I do want to point out that the trio in the final group, they're the only group. That's not true. There's two groups out on the golf course right now, but they are still out on the golf course and they did not play well. Austin Eckroat, even par through 17, got off to a really poor start. Carl Yuan, also even par through 17. They both have dropped 11 spots. They're currently in a tie for 12th. Benny on has held his round together. And as of this moment, still very much in the mix to win the Sony open, but man, it, it's, it's hard to play out of the final group on the weekend with not a lot of winning experience. It, it is hard. Uh, it can, it can go one of two ways. I mean, there, there are times where you see these guys put themselves in the mix with a great round on Saturday or Sunday, but typically one of those days uh, you see some struggles and what you can do, what you see Ben on do today right? Um, three under through 17 hanging in there with a group that doesn't have a ton of momentum is really impressive. Uh, and that's the sign of someone who's comfortable being in a final group, but yeah, the, uh, the life can get sucked out of you pretty quick playing in that last group. If you're not on your game, the Austin Eckro scorecard is pretty remarkable. He bogeys one and two another at six. 
he by the time he steps on 13 t he is four over par four over uh, i'll remind you greg the golf course played a stroke and a half under par on saturday then i don't know if he has you know said screw it uh i'm out of this i don't have a chance i don't feel the nerves anymore birdies 13 14 15 17 and he's in the fairway on 18. I mean, there is a chance he gets this thing back under par. It'll be much too little, much too late. But he possesses the firepower, obviously. Yeah, that's clear. And that's why you're out on the PGA Tour. But he started to get a couple putts to fall. Right, Gets a 15-footer, an 18-footer, an 11-footer to go right in a row on those uh, on those three holes in a row, 13, 14, 15. And adding another one at 17, that's not an easy shot in there. Uh, and he hit it in there to three feet. So definitely started to feel a little mojo after after a couple of putts fell for him. Two men at the top of the leaderboard, both in at 14 under. We're going to start with Keegan Bradley. It was the third, remember, Grillo, Sam Stevens, and Keegan Bradley shooting the round of the day. That's 63, and Keegan has been great this week. I think we talked about him on... Thursday night about how solid he was and held that round together. Talked about him last night about how easy and the bogey free uh, 66 was on Friday. And then he goes low here on Saturday, just one blemish on the card on number 11. He talked after his round about the confidence that he has with the putter. I am, I'm ready for the Keegan Bradley Ryder cup revenge tour starting now. It, he's one of my favorite players to watch when he's in contention because you just feel now I know that some people feel the complete opposite and they, they can't stand it. I love watching him compete because it brings an intensity to the game. Uh, it, it, and you can, you can feel it watching him, even though he said he feels really calm. All he felt really calm all day today, which he admitted was rare for him. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I appreciate the self-awareness. There. Yes. Yes. Me too. <laughs> Which is part of the Keegan Bradley turnaround, I think, in the in the public eye. Mm-hmm. But look, th- I think they mentioned something on the broadcast. I think I heard this right. He didn't miss a putt inside of thirteen feet today. Oh, um, which is really impressive. But what I found to be even more impressive, as you look at this, uh, as you look at this tournament, and I'm going through these leaders and trying to find someone who stands out. Um, I don't know if anybody, maybe one other guy, not many guys hit it as well as Keegan Bradley did today. So he doesn't miss a putt inside of 13 feet, but he hits it inside of 20 feet on nine occasions. So half the holes, he also hit nine to 14 fairways, half the holes. He's hitting it inside of 20 feet. He gave himself so many looks. And for someone who's feeling like, like they can fall with the putter, like they have a chance to go in. Boy, that's a that's a good place to be because you're giving yourself a lot of realistic chances. And he capitalized on many of them. Let's see. He was round three, um, 10 of 10 from inside three feet, two of two from three to five, two of two from five to seven, one of one from seven to 10, 10 feet and inside, 15 of 15. And then he was two of four from 10 to 15, which makes sense if those two that he missed were outside of 13 feet. That right. Way. I would all add up. <laughs> so I guess probably like what? Oh, for two from 13 to 15 feet. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But he Which did make, exist. He made one from one of three from 15 to 20 feet. So a little bit of a, a little bit of a bonus there. Yep. So he, look, Keegan's feeling really good and absolutely heads into tomorrow where you look at this leaderboard, uh, you look at the way that he's playing. He absolutely heads into tomorrow. The, the man to beat. A hundred percent agree there. Now he will enter the final round tied with Grayson Murray, 69, 63, 64 to start his Sony open highlighted by an Eagle on nine and four other birdies, no bogeys on the card. And Greg, we were talking about this before we went hot. Uh, Grayson Murray, who played, uh, a bit all over the place last year. He played a lot on the Corn Ferry Tour. He played a lot on the PGA Tour. He won twice. He won in May. He won in September. Both of those were on the Corn Ferry Tour. Um, when he gets it going, 
there is plenty of upside in his game. He is extremely talented. Yeah, you know, he's had some issues off the golf course that have, t- by his own admission, really affected his play. Uh, and there's kind of two sides to it. And one side, he he dealt with some anxiety, he dealt with uh, some alcoholism and issues like this. Uh, I think he's probably added a little more stress in his life. Maybe it's a sign of the stress in his life when he's on social media the way that he was in the past. Mm-hmm. And I, I think he's figured a lot of that out, which has been really beneficial. And, and then he, he started working and when he got his PGA tour card. I remember him talking about this. He started working with a new mental coach um, who was actually a, a Navy seal. And they started you know, really working on his belief in himself. And he, he used a line was, um, I was tired of getting beat by guys that weren't as good as me. Mm. And all of a sudden he started to believe how good he was. So this is a, a, a fresh start. It's a resurgence and you're starting to see Grayson Murray's talent really shine through where for much of his career, I think uh, he would say that it was a, a, a underperformance. Yeah, so those two are in at 14 under par. Benny on still the only one that can kind of disrupt the uh, the 13 unders. He is finishing up right now. Do we know if they're going to go on? I mean, there's 82 guys. They're going off split tees on Sunday, I imagine. I, I would imagine as well, but I don't know for sure. Yeah, it's a lot of guys to to get through. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a lot. Yeah, Look, looks by the way like Ben on's just in front of the green and two. Okay, so just if he short gets up and down. He gets a thirteen under par. He would tie yep. Sam Stevens. Yep, okay. that's exactly right. All right. Well, we've got uh, the board for the betting favorites, and it should be no surprise that Keegan Bradley is the favorite to win this golf tournament, two to one. Uh, Grayson Murray, five to one. Benny on who obviously still out on the golf course, sandwiched right in between them at plus 360. So Vegas, assuming he is uh, likely going to get up and down and make that birdie, I assume that as well. And then you can get some longer shots like Sam Stevens at nine. Chris Kirk, who we didn't even talk about tonight for the first time all week. Three shots back after a steady three under 67. And then everybody else, Pavan, Semikawa, Silverman, Kitayama, all 28 to one or longer. It's a interesting board because I, I think the two guys that jump off the page when I look at the leaderboard would be Ben on and Keegan Bradley, who are right there at the top. Um, so uh, Keegan's the man to beat. And and I do feel like he's going to close this deal tomorrow. I, I love the way Ben on's playing. I think there's an uptick with what he has in the putter, but it, it's really important not to count out Chris Kirk. At, at 11 to one heading into tomorrow. And, and that's the best number on the board that I see. You look at what he did today. He mm-hmm. made, he, he left it in, in the bunker on one three putted two, and then absolutely went to work with the irons, uh, led the field and strokes gain approach today. But you, you look at these proximities. I'm just, I'm just going to read some of these from the front nine. He, so he starts bogey bogey. Then he hits it to 14 feet, 14 and a half feet, six feet, eight inches, 10 feet, four feet, 11 inches, 18 feet, 18 feet, nine feet. That's through 10, right? And then he hits it to two feet on, on 16. He hit it to 15 feet on 12. Like all of a sudden he just went right back to Kapalua where he is assaulting the flag and He's calm and comfortable and knows what he's doing. I just, I feel like it's the best number on the board and he is playing phenomenal golf. So the hope is that on Thursday night, when Keegan was 50 to one, you maybe took a little sprinkle. The hope is that last night when Keegan was 20 to one, you saw the writing on the wall and now you don't have to bet him when he's two to one. In fact, Patrick is holding a 60 to one pre tournament ticket on. Keegan Bradley right now, which would be very fun. We also have Chris Kirk in the mix. We've got Benny on in the mix. So we might, we might find a winner uh, this time tomorrow, but I agree with you, Greg, when you look at uh, the stat profiles of guys that are trying to chase Keegan down, you look at Ben Silverman, who, you know, has gained alone today, gained 2.8 strokes around the green and another 1.7 with the putter. 
that is not going to happen again, right? You look at some of these crazy numbers that guys have put up to get themselves into this position. Well, what has Chris Kirk done? In three rounds, he's been fifth off the tee, second on approach. He has lost around the green. He has lost with the putter. He has not had his good round yet. He won last week. If there is a 62 out there uh, or a 63 out there on Sunday, Chris Kirk is one of the more likely options to shoot that. Yes, and you may need that because I have I have a feeling Keegan's shooting 66. You know, so, uh, you know, one of these guys is going to go shoot 66 and it's going to take a low one to go cat to go track that down and catch him. I think we gave Ben, I gave Benny on that birdie too fast because uh, from what I could tell, he, he was 50 feet away after a second shot and now he's 35 feet away. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. So he's at 12. <laughs> I didn't see it, but that's what it looks like. I'll, every time I look over, it looked like Eckroat was getting a ruling. It looked like Yuan was getting a ruling. It, this final hall has taken like an hour for this group to play. A, a disaster. <laughs> and so I didn't see I, the shot. But. I wanted to bring up one more thing about Grace and Murray too. Please. Because you and you made me think of this when you were mentioning the pre-tournament odds. I wonder what you could have gotten Grace and Murray through eight holes on Thursday when he was three over cool. or three yeah. over through five. You know, Ah, that is that's the kind of thing when if you picked him as a, one of your long shots or had him in a DFS lineup, you're like, what have I done? And well, now he's now he's in the final group. We were talking about he was sixty two hundred on DraftKings. Uh, his odds, I think I have I should have them here. His odds to win this event were three hundred and fifty to one. So he is now, what is he, Greg? Uh, excuse me. What is he, Josh? What was he, six to one? Well, he was in the third. He was in the third spot there. Five and a half to Five one. Five and a half. <laughs> he was 350 to one to win this golf tournament three days ago. That is why people love betting golf outrights. There is no other 350 to one shot that can come in in four days. Right. It could actually, and it could actually happen. Things fall right for him in 18 holes on Sunday. 351 comes in. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. Good for him. Good for him. We will be back no matter who wins this golf tournament on Sunday night to discuss that. The conclusion of what's going on in Dubai, which is a pretty good shootout between uh, Tommy Fleetwood and Roy McElroy. There'll be plenty of fun stuff to talk about. But for now, we're going to put a pin in it and say big thanks to producer Josh. He does all the hard work behind the scenes. Greg Ducharme is available on Twitter at the real GFD. Benny on is not in for par yet because he just ran that putt way by. And we will get the conclusion of Ben on's round another time. Goodbye.